Will I ever find love? Did I have the best I was ever going to get and I ruined it? It's one of your biggest fears. That you've missed your chance. That the one and only guy for you slipped through your fingers because of something you did or didn't do. And it's this kind of regret that causes the worst kind of heartache ever because it's something that you feel you've lost forever. And there's just no going back. Even worse, you feel like you won't ever get another chance. If there's one thing that we do better than anything else, it's that we blame ourselves and then we beat ourselves up over it. It doesn't matter how much that we've learned so far, or how much we've grown, no one is harder on us than we are. We know all too well exactly what we should have done or not done. And we're so good at making sure we know exactly how much we messed up. We're so good at blaming ourselves. It doesn't seem to matter what he's done. You've got so much grace for him, so much. So much understanding for him and every possible excuse ready for him and his behavior that always deserves just as much blame as you're putting on yourself. But if it's him and what he's done or didn't do, You'll forgive him without question and you'll understand and you'll even sympathize with him. But if it's you, then forget it. You expect perfection of yourself and absolutely nothing less. No compassion, no understanding, no grace, no excuses, no leeway, and certainly no forgiveness. It doesn't matter that this kind of treatment of your beautiful, soft soul is completely self-defeating and self-destructive. It doesn't make us suddenly become exactly the woman that we want to be. In fact, it has the exact opposite effect. Our self-esteem and our self-confidence plummet as we realize once again that we've, we've done it again, whatever it happens to be. Whether we found ourselves in yet another relationship all too similar to the last one with the same guy, just with a different name and face, even though we'd sworn that we'd never wind up here again. Whether we back down one more time on our values that we told ourselves we'd never compromise on after what happened last time. Whether we didn't call him out on that behavior that we said we never put up with from him again, the end result is the same here. You're blaming yourself and you're beating yourself up over it again. There is no one, no one who holds you to such high expectations and expects nothing but perfection from you like you do over and over and over again. If you can relate to this, pause the video right here and say it in the comments. Yes, I do this or no, not me. And then make sure to hit the thumbs up button and click the subscribe button while you're at it. I have only one thing to say to this and I'm saying this from experience. It's time to stop. It's time to stop treating yourself like this. It only fills you with self-doubt and it doesn't help you at all. If you're ever gonna change this current pattern, it starts with doing the opposite. And that means being gentle and caring and loving with yourself instead. All those things that you think you should have done differently, everything you think that would have made just all the difference in the world, well, the truth is it wouldn't have changed a thing. Because if someone has such impossible expectations of you to expect that you are only worthy if you are perfect, then believe me, you don't want any part of them. You've tried perfect. You've tried being everything to all people and especially his kind of people. Now, where has it gotten you? Has it brought you any closer to this kind of love you yearn for? Or has it only brought you more pain and more hurt, more trying to measure up to someone else's standards who for all their potential in the world likely had no clue about love. And yet this, this is who you're pining for. This is who you can't let go of. It's the idea of him that you can't let go of. It's the idea that you weren't enough or you failed again or whatever other stories we tell ourselves to try to make some sense of it all. But it's always, always at your own expense that these stories spin their tail. Refuse to take it on. Refuse to carry what was never yours to carry. You want someone real, someone to hold your hand, someone to share your heart. Someone who makes you feel like you're finally home. You want something real, not the show. Real love could never, ever be so cruel to give you a heart like yours and no one to share it with. Don't accept that it could be. Don't accept that 
And I promise you, as someone who's been here, you will never, ever have to. In fact, the only regret that you should have is staying too long with the wrong person because if it was the right relationship for you, then it wouldn't hinge on something you did or didn't do. Whether it's staying with men who clearly aren't on the same page or holding on to friends who are no longer behaving like friends, if there was one single thing I would have done differently, it was this. And yet, if you're anything like me, how do you know when it's been enough time? How do you really know when it's been too long? Because you've got such a beautiful, loving, caring, giving, understanding heart. You know all too well just how good it could be because it shows so much potential. And so because of this, you have such a hard time knowing when it's time to move on and let someone out of your life. After all, what if, what if, that's what you wonder, especially when you've already invested so much. It comes down to that again. That theme is always, always there, isn't it? Because see, that's the beauty of this. Yes, it's you allowing this again, allowing yourself to go there to believe it can still be different this time with him, allowing yourself to believe the excuses, to forgive him yet again, to see past the obvious to what only you seem to be able to see, to be so understanding. But because you're the one allowing this, you're also the one who can set your boundaries and draw that line in the sand on what you are no longer willing to allow. You're the one in control here. You're no longer the victim. When he won't commit, when he doesn't call, when he all but disappears, when he treats you that way, when you put him on that pedestal and put yourself so far beneath him that you can't see the truth anymore, this is you choosing him. This is you not choosing you. But it doesn't have to be this way. If he won't commit and you want a commitment, what about this works for you? If he doesn't call or text or communicates with you in whatever way he said he would, could it be that you have your answer from the silence? If he all but disappears, why do you have to make this about you? He's the one who disappeared. If he's treating you in a way that doesn't honor or respect or show you that he loves you, why are you choosing to allow yourself to be treated like this? No one deserves to be put on a pedestal. We are all equal, regardless of what gender we are, how intelligent we are, how beautiful or handsome we are, how together we are. This is your time. It's not his time anymore. You can always keep living like this. It's always your choice. But if there's one common thread that unites this entire community, it's the one that says, it's your turn, your choice, your life, your chance. Find that strong voice within you. See what she's capable of. See what she can do. She's there, just waiting her turn. Don't disappoint her. Show her the life that she was born to live because it doesn't matter where we've been, what we've been through. On some level, so many of us have experienced that feeling, that question in our minds of whether we screwed up and it has somehow excluded us from having our own happily ever after. And the longer it takes, the more we find ourselves repeating the same patterns over and over again, finding ourselves with the same type of men, just a different name, but the same MO, we question it even more. Is this our punishment? Were we really that bad? Have we done something that unforgivable? It says so much more about our culture than it ever says about you. Because we live in a culture that's all too much about punishment than grace, about blame than compassion, about shame than empathy and understanding. From a young age, we learn that bad behavior deserves to be punished and that it doesn't matter why we do something, it's the outward behavior that counts. And so with a culture that is so unforgiving and judgmental toward each other, it's not surprising that we treat ourselves the same way and we expect that others will judge us this way too. And that's the problem. It isn't our past behaviors that keep us living this way with this kind of self-punishing attitude toward ourselves. It isn't where we've been and what we've done in our lives that we're not proud of that keeps us stuck in our patterns. It's the way we feel about ourselves. It's this baggage that we're carrying around. It's this kind of judgmental, punitive thinking that keeps us stuck and repeating the same patterns over and over because we've learned our cultural mantras so well. We have no doubt that we don't deserve anything better than this. But here's the truth. You did the best with what you knew at the time. You did the best you could with what you knew at the time. Whatever you did, however you behaved, it was where you were at the time. It was the best you knew how to do. And when we're desperate, when there's a need so deep within us that we feel like we would rather die than be alone or left alone one more time, 
It isn't just about being alone. It's about a need that runs so deep and so subconscious that it defies all logic and reality. And that's the whole point. It isn't something that you logically made a decision to do. It seemed to take on a life of its own. You didn't know any better. These aren't excuses. They are what your reality was at the time. The triggers that weren't about an adult woman making a healthy, logical decision, but were more of the scared little girl inside making a decision through that filter based on the needs of a little girl. We think we need to be perfect or at least somewhere close. We have so little grace for ourselves for what we've been through and where we've come from. We don't understand that it's not about exchanging blame for ourselves with blame for the people who raised us or blame for our culture. It's time to stop being so hard on yourself. It's about getting away from blaming and shaming altogether and replacing those negative ingrained practices that serve no one and certainly not ourselves with love and compassion and empathy for each and every one of us, for being exactly who we are, not what we were supposed to be. It's about realizing that we don't want anyone in our lives who would judge us and punish us and hold us to such impossible standards based on the reality of who we are and our very own individual stories that no one ever has any right to judge us for, and certainly not if they've never walked in our shoes. And it's about coming to the realization that a loving partner, someone who is truly worthy of you, has figured this out too. He won't be expecting perfection. He won't be judging you like you expect. Someone who's truly right for you will only have love and understanding and empathy and compassion for you. You have so much to offer. Nothing has changed. No matter what you've been through or where you've been, the truest, purest kind of love is still your birthright. You still have so much to offer. And those thoughts that would tell you differently, that would have you believe that this is your punishment to never have the kind of love that you've always wanted because you had your chance and you somehow messed it up? Well, they're just plain wrong. They're part of that false belief system that so many of us hold and have such a hard time shaking off of us that we aren't good enough, that we don't deserve better because of something in our past, something so bad that we did that we must pay for it over and over and over again. But those are lies, all of them. Yes, they run deep, but a true love for yourself, a true love for yourself runs even deeper. And that's the kind of love that knows without a doubt the real truth, that there is nothing you can ever do that would mean you don't still deserve all that is good and wonderful and beautiful in life and love. You just need to believe it too. Now I'm gonna turn it over to you. Does this resonate with you? Tell us about it in the comments and I'll see you there.